morning kids and I say that because I'm going to do a little review of the Honda CBT 50 RS in the style of um, Mr. Dim Flyer one of my favourite YouTubers I like watching his stuff so yeah a little, little video in, uh, in his sort of style there'll be a couple of little things in here that you might recognise um, but yeah thank you Honda lending me the new CBT 50 RS not true obviously this is my bike and it's not exactly new 1980 yeah you've got a big van coming here Mr DHL is going to be in a hurry uh, so yeah 1980 Honda CBT 50 RS now when these were released I would this is all from memory so if I missed the odd bit out you can fill it into the comments below but hopefully if someone's looking for one of these bikes it might help them out 1980 these were introduced and they came in three colours uh, red, blue, which is this one, and black. They were kickstart, 248, 249cc, something like 26 horsepower. I uh, can't remember the torque or the weight, but you could look them up. Not heavy, 130 kilos maybe. They're not heavy, they're a lovely little lightweight thing. Single disc on the front, drum brake on the rear. Uh, single carb, which is a, I think it's a Keyin can't remember the size but it's got an accelerator pump on it 12 volt electrics uh, head amp's not particularly good and then uh, I thought I'd just seen these people maybe I haven't in fact I, feel like I think I've just come out of this junction on a, on a ride earlier uh, yeah uh, is it 26 mil carb? Oh, I can't remember Anyway, um, standard accessories with the RS. Um, nothing. There we go. Cable operated clutch, hydraulic front brake, being a disc. Um, little skinny tyres, front and rear, both 18 inch. Now, standard, they came with a 2 into 2 exhaust pipe, but you're not going to find one of those for the love of money these days. If you do, it'll be big money. There is a company that make replica exhausts. Uh, downpipes are fairly easy to get, silencers aren't. So uh, most people by now have got a two into one pipe. This has got a Motad slash Micron. Same company at the time, two into one pipe. Performance wise, you're probably looking at, I think the top speed when they were new. Where should we go? Should we go? Let's go down this little lane, shall we? Yeah, we like little lanes. Top speed was probably, um, I think it was in the 80s, 80 something miles an hour. Uh, but from my experience, I think I've, I think I might have weighed this up to 70-ish plus a few at some point on a private road. But that's not what it's about, is it? Uh, but the most important thing, cruising speed. I've got one tooth up on the front sprocket to drop the revs down a little bit. This will cruise all day at 65 mile an hour without batting an eyelid. Uh, it will do 70, as dispatch riders from the 80s will tell you. In fact, it will do more than 70. Uh, it wasn't unknown for these to sit with a dispatch rider with a throttle pinned against the stop for many, many miles. Generally, until excuse me, until they went bang from lack of maintenance or similar. Speaking of maintenance, most people these days change the oil on their RS's every thousand miles. Now it sounds quite um, uh, quite a short interval and it is but most people don't do a lot of miles and these so thousand miles might be once a year which is what you would do anyway so let's face it I mean I do more miles on this. Uh, they take 1.7 litres of 1040. Now a thousand miles I've got to be honest you could probably stretch that these days because oil compared to oil, oil today compared to 40 years ago has come a long long way you know you got decent fully synthetic oils um, which I'm sure do a, a far better job at lubricating the motor than the oil did all those years ago and I think the Honda interval was 1800 miles back then 3000 kilometers something like that but I'm sure you could look that up um, the motor motors are generally reliable 
Oh, this is mucky, isn't it? Where are we going to go? Let's go there, let's go right. The caveat being um, the top end. The camshaft runs directly in the cylinder head. Camshaft, for those of you not mechanically minded, is the thing that rotates with uh, cam lobes. Imagine that it looks, looks a bit like a teardrop. And what that does is that rotates and pushes on the top of the valves in the cylinder head uh, at a certain timing with the piston to basically let um, air and fuel in and let exhaust gases out and then both close to allow compression for the spark to make it go bang to the power stroke. Uh, the camshaft spins around uh, pretty fast and um, because it runs directly in the head it basically runs on an aluminium <coughs> surface the bearing being a cushion of oil and uh, that would be all well and good except these don't have an oil filter they have an oil strainer which is a gauze which lives underneath the right hand cover on the clutch side which just catches any big bits so any small bits are free to float around the motor and can cause damage to the bearing surface let's call it a bearing surface for want of a better word now I've had this one a part of the cam out of the top end off and it is all in beautiful condition so I've got no issues with that at all but yeah that's the uh, that's the only one right what I'm going to do now is I'm going to find my favourite parking space in Great Missenden um, train station car park and let's do there we go let's have a look at the bike kids let's have a look at the bike bit of a mist and fire so I'm actually going to be going the other way that he normally goes um, let's put it on full lock and let's rotate it around lovely and light to move there we go what should we call that let's call that a parking space and a half for the Missenden flyer but yeah, 250 RS. So the camshaft basically is is there. That's where it runs. Spins around, operates the valves. That's what it does. Clutches in there, and you have a chain, cam chain, which basically runs and dr is driven off with a sprocket on the crankshaft to the camshaft. There's your carburetor in there. Little pumper carb. Two into one pipe. Most will have a two into two. But um, things that go wrong with these, the main thing is probably the cylinder head with the cam, I would say. That's probably the main thing. Other than that, they are generally pretty bomb proof. I'm just going to slide the bike out of the way in case someone comes around the corner. Yeah, they are generally pretty bomb proof. Um, things that tend to wear, chain sprockets. They can be quite hard on the chain because as standard they don't have a very good cush drive system on the back wheel. This one has been adapted by an engineer to have a proper cush drive and it is absolutely beautiful and smooth. Standard they don't. And obviously chains in the old days were a bit crap as well. No one really had X-wing or O-ring chains. So um, yeah they did they, they did um, knock chains out. But again, you know if a chain lasts you 5,000 miles that could be five years of use depending on um, how many miles you do so I don't think we're you know you're not looking at expensive um, expensive stuff New Church I don't think I've been this way into New Church before uh, yeah fuel economy um, as I said I've never got less than 70 and I've quite often got more than 90, 90 miles to the gallon from a bike of this age. Oh, what's that? That lovely old BSA. It's nice, isn't it? Yeah, 90 miles to the gallon. So all in all, they are a cheap bike to run because they will be uh, historic, um, historic registered. So you've got no tax or MOT to, to pay. Insurance, my insurance is 60 something pound a year. Bugger all is it. 
um, it's not going to depreciate uh, and as I say cracking little commuter bikes really good bikes now thinking about 83 they did bring out the RSD this was an RSA early one RSD or the Deluxe which had an electric start um, sort of jewelry's out on the electric start because some people say they weren't very reliable some people love the button but I'm quite happy with the Kickstarter it's got a decompressor on it automatic decompressor so uh, it's nice and easy to use you know it really isn't a problem let's play and turn it off but yeah so you've got as I say alley rims which are nice um, 18 inch three and a half on the back um, a three on the front in older sizes single piston front um, brake which is sufficient it's not fantastic rear brakes are drum they're easy to lock up um, other things that can go wrong on these inside up under there you've got a metal mud guard which runs under the seat they rot really badly mine's in mint condition but they can rot really badly um, yeah but other than that they are lovely little easy bikes to to maintain looking for a used one now that's got good fork legs um, you know maybe slightly problematic because a lot of them will be uh, <coughs> pitted on the stanchions mine are beautiful these fairings super rare very lucky to have that I bought a whole bike for that and the blue paintwork that's another story oh it's gonna need to wash when I get home look at all this crap on it I've just ordered a mud flap for the front wheel with a little Honda logo on it proper old-school one so that will keep some of the crap off racks are a nice addition genuine Honda um, this has got a different bottom part because this has got crowds of panniers if you remember them from the 80s top box always a nice addition are you super unleaded because uh, well why not at 90 to the gallon but generally speaking they are a cracking little bike um, I'm probably a bit biased because I do love and love them um, but yeah cracking bike plenty of spares some people want stupid money for spares or they'll sell things like um, a cam carrier for the head on its own and then the head separately they should be sold as a pair because they're machined as a pair um, but other than that yeah parts are easy to find so yeah, if you've got any questions about RS's in general put them in the um, thing at the bottom and uh, if you like RS's stick a subscribing on this on the channel if you like it you haven't got to follow it but stick a subscribing I'm trying to get to 500, 500 subscribers which would be nice and you'll see there's a lot of RS content on this page um, it's a bit of a niche market but that's what I like so um, yeah happy days go get yourself an RS and enjoy bopping around the lanes at nice sensible speeds but zero money go further if you like I've been to Wales but uh, and I rode this back from Penrith in the Lake District to Kent so you can do decent miles on them uh, and if you want to rev them you can rev them you know you can, you can give them a bit of stick if you want and they will take it let's say I generally don't sit at more than six and a half thousand rpm because that's a nice uh, that's a nice engine speed for me but if you want to rev them you can they're not fast though yeah so that was eight and a half thousand but yeah it'll go quite happily but yeah RS's go buy one life's too short so uh, yeah, if you've enjoyed this video say like and subscribe and all that crap and I will see you on the next episode of RSing About take care everybody see you all soon